But this, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the show, my show, Arabology, was named after her CD, the one and only Yasmin Hamdan. Ahlan wa sahlan. We're really, you know, we're, yeah, we're we, wearing we, the same colors. We match, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and pure coincidence, another connection we, we have together. Yes, means first time at Stanford, so I'm going to begin by asking her her impressions so far. Let's see what she thinks about the Rodans and the church and what you've seen. Ah, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Hey. You're, you're lucky guys to be here. I hope you're enjoying everything. And Yasmin's going to be tomorrow in concert at the America, Great American Music Hall in San Francisco, where she will be singing a melange of her oeuvre, of her songs, including the new uh, CD, which is called The Beautiful Ones, Bel Arabi Al Jamilat. And I'd like to begin by asking you to tell us about the song Al Jamilat. Uh, how did that come about? Actually, it's the only song that I didn't. Uh, write uh, alone. I mean, I, I, I took the poem of Mahmoud Darwish. You know Mahmoud Darwish? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a very beautiful poem about femininity and about womanhood. But it's, um, uh, it's a very tender, full of images, very sensual, and, uh, and it has something that really links me to, the, I mean, this is what links me to this place. That is my kind of uh, country or um, home. Uh, in a way, uh, and it's uh, it has humor, and uh, it's it's also about beauty and its imperfection, and that's I think what beauty is. So yeah, I thought that it was very much what I wanted to do. So maybe we'll take a question. What do you think? Rally, I'm not Rally. Stand up and come close. Rally, walk down the aisle as if you were getting married. <laughs> walk up to Yasmin <laughs> Hamdan. <laughs> At the Halloween, I'll ask you a question. Yeah, no. Please. How did you feel about the film Only Lovers Left Alive? It was great. Yeah. It was great. She's, uh, she's a really uh, a very inspiring woman. And she's, uh, she's uh, yeah, it was, I mean, the whole shoot that night was incredible because uh, I met Jim Jarmusch in, um, in Marrakesh in a film festival. I was, I was there with my partner, who's a filmmaker. He was a jewelry member. And uh, and I met a girl uh, who ended up being a, pa pian uh, a pianist, a piano player, and she improvised a concert and invited me. And so Jim was there and other people, and I improvised something. And after the show, he came to me and he had an idea for this for a scene because he was writing his script. And after two years, when he finished his you know writing and pulled together the production, he contacted me and. I read the sh uh, <clears throat> I read the script. I wrote the song, and then we shot it. And that night, in particular, I think it was Ramadan. I'm not sure, but you know Tangier. I don't know if you've been there. It's a fabulous. I mean, uh, the old souk has a really fabulous vibe. It's like ancient. Even people's body language, everything is so ancient, and it's really narrow streets and. And I remember, for example, a kid in the middle of the street, a four-year-old kid at four o'clock in the morning just walking alone. You know, things that are like in, like in a movie. And uh, yeah, the, the, it was really funny. I have, I have to say that um, Tom Hiddleston, I, had, I didn't know him very well. So when I saw him, he had this peruke, this black peruke. This and, wig. Yeah. And then when the film was in Cannes, I see a blonde guy coming to me and hugging me. He said, how are you? I'm like, I'm fine. I said, oh, you're not, you don't recognize me. I'm like, he said, I'm Tom. I'm like, oh my God. I, I th yeah, I thought he was a brunette. I mean, I don't know. So that's the, that's the for, for those of you who haven't seen it, you should. It's a movie called Only Lovers Left Alive. Yeah. It, it starts Tilda Swanton, right? And uh, and there's this scene and where with Tom Yasmin Hiddleston. and yes, no. a lot of girls love him. But he's the reason, he's a really, <laughs> and he's a really really nice guy. Yeah. But the reason I watched it was not Tilda Swinton, because uh, <laughs> Yasmin Hamdan has this beautiful scene where she's in a real uh, Moroccan yeah, uh, cafe, in a old cafe. A bar, and she starts singing in the smoky at and you sing that song, Hali. Yeah, that I wrote it for the scene, and I actually have a, like a um, traditional uh, Moroccan, you know, the Gnawa? The, yeah. 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 And so uh, it was great. We shot all night, and in the middle of the 
of the scenes where you know when they were changing the cameras, etc. We were singing like like Abdel Halim, Abdel Wahab with the with the audience, and the people were so cool. Wow. Like they were super cool. I I really uh, recommend Morocco for those who don't who haven't been there. I don't know now because I haven't been since like four years. But Morocco is is really a very interesting place. Uh, very interesting places to visit. So I'm going to ask her just two more questions and then we'll have you guys talk. And I want Yasmin to run with this because when we were in the car, I got to drive with Yasmin Hamdan in my car. <laughs> I'm not watching the interior forever again. He drives very well. <laughs> <laughs> She's next to me, I was like, yeah. <laughs> but I asked her, I said, do you want to stay away from politics when we talk? And she said, no, Ramsey, I don't want to, you know, you, I'm I happy said, what do you talk. mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's like, and, and I figured one of the questions would be, uh, you know, her position of enunciation as a woman. Is, does she consider herself a feminist? How does she feel about, you know, marginalized sexualities and the way they have embraced her? Because far from being your, what we call, hishik bishik kind of uh, um, role model in uh, the Arab world, like Haifa Wahbe and these kind of singers. She's the opposite of that. She's a fiercely independent woman who is redefining the underground music scene and the independent music scene and is making it into a different kind of mainstream. So how do you feel about being called an icon by all these marginalized sexualities, including women's sexuality? And also, uh, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about uh, your political view of feminism. Well, you know, as I told you, it's feminism is a label that I don't, I don't know. It's it's abstract for me. It's just I'm on the ground and I had to fight for my own rights. And it's it's I, I it came from a very um, personal and maybe selfish place. And also, it's it came from a moral point of view. I have values and I and I was ready to fight for them. And and I felt very claustrophobic, you know, I lived in, I was born in Lebanon, but, in, you know, it was the war, etc. So we, we left, we, we lived in so many other places, and I, and I lived also in places where I felt I was like a, like, yeah, a minority or discriminated always. And I, I felt very angry about it, but um, I started realizing that I had to do something about it for myself, at least, and, and, and also to say no and to create this pocket or the space where I can elaborate and explore other possibilities. And, and so, uh, so it, it just came as uh, I improvised it, I really improvised it. And I don't, I'm a feminist if you want, but uh, I don't know what feminism is in terms of what in, in the Western world that right. means. Right. And I'm very careful about um, those labels, and I'm very careful about, about also being opportunist. I'm, I'm fighting for this, I'm a hero, and I'm, I'm kind of not, I don't want to get into that because my, really my first priority is my art, and it's in, in my art I can create so many um, inter, deep, yeah, bridges, I can create so many like meeting points, and I can meet so many people, and it, it, that's my passion. The, the, my passion comes from this very intellectual and emotional place where I can mix those, you know, and meet those amazing musicians. You have the seat, your ideas, your music, your melodies, and then it grows, and so many other things. It becomes like bigger than you, begin, bigger than what you imagine. And so I'm very happy if people can identify to that or fear, feel related to that. Uh, so, yeah, but I. I from the beginning, when I started doing music, I, I had I had a notion of what uh, what I wanted. I ha I knew that I mean one of my drives was political. One of my drives was you know like this you know social, and I also was uh, was in an environment that where I felt a lot of pressure pressured as a woman, and I didn't I didn't want to give up to that pressure, and I didn't feel that I could fit anywhere. So I was I'm kind of an alien. I couldn't do anything else but to just say no that's what I want and that's what I'm gonna do and it was not easy and and it, especially when I started with soul kills it was end of the um, yeah end of the 90s we get on this 2000 in Beirut it was a like a post-war uh, city so like half of the city was destroyed it, there was something very melancholic and very sad about this place because you felt so much pain but you felt also so much hope 
and that was my drive and that was I was inspired by, by this vacuum that anything could happen mm -hmm. so I felt really powerful in that environment I felt uh, I felt also that I wanted to do some things uh, in a very underground way because I yeah because that it was interesting for me I came from that culture weirdly enough I lived you know in the Gulf and in so many other places in Kuwait but I just in my my own bubble I read a lot and I listened to a lot of different music and and I kind of identified to a lot of struggles and resistant artists so that's how it started really for me. And, and just in terms of, you know, we were in the car and, she, and the way she was telling me you know, about her concept of feminism is also, I think we're talking about like a distinctly kind of uh, burgeoning concept of feminism from and in the Arab world. And sometimes I think with Western feminism, we tend to have a little bit of an imposition of the Western values that come with it, as if uh, Arab feminists need to be rescued, you know. And I think this is one of the things you told me with Sayyada yeah. about, yes, I'm a feminist, but I'm not going to borrow the term from the West and appropriate it. Yeah, and it's also also about, some, I, I think we live in a very, uh, we live in a very social media world where, you know, it, be, it can become very easily a fashion to right. be anything. And it became, it, it, when I said I'm tr I try not to be opportunist with that, is that I try to be like moral with, with that term, you know. Right. And, it, it, and of course I could be more vocal about it and maybe maybe attract the attention of those who think they are or, or of those who are whatever in, in some kind of movement but I don't I have no desire for that really. Well I think your music and your uh, Yeah I think everything is in the music itself, and right, I think there's right. something I mean we're all humans we're all you know, we, we all have problems we all suffer we all have joys we you know we're all gonna die at the end of the day and and I don't like facades, and so I think that through the emotion you can, and humor, for those who understand it or feel it, you can get to a lot of people and, you know, just circulate freely and just cross over borders and checkpoints. So we're, we're going to turn it over in a second, but I just want to, because I promised this friend of mine that I would get an answer for this. You guys know about the group Mashro Leila, who also comes from Lebanon, and they've been creating a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, news right now because they were banned in Egypt, and Egypt is kind of cracking down on LGBT people right now. And I was interested to know from, you know, a non-LGBT person, uh, how you feel when your music becomes a source of comfort for those voiceless, voiceless people, <laughs> how you feel about banning people based on their sexual well, orientation. I, I don't as, think as you a, need a, to be a, Palestinian to be pro-Palestinian, and you don't need to be LGBT to be pro, and you don't need to be lesbian to be pro-lesbian, you don't need to be black to be pro, pro mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of, and you don't need to be Arab to be pro-Arab, so I don't go there. So for me, it's just, uh, it's not only about, you know, it's not about much Leda nor about me, because, you know, with Sokis, we're also kind of censored in many ways, right. and, and me, I was censored so many times, and, and Elia, my partner, I mean, uh, so many people. Uh, I mean, that's, we say who yeah, Elia, Elia is, for... is a filmmaker, Elia Suleiman, he's a Palestinian filmmaker, he's my partner, and he's, he's incredible. So that's always has been there, and it's always there in all societies. If, if you look at the USS, like the United, uh, Russia, uh, when, you know, with the Union, Soviet Union, right. so many artists <clears throat> were like just... Uh, Syria. So that's always happened. This is this is about power. This is about people struggling with the power, with the authority, and that's um, and and you know it's it's sad, sad, and I think that um, it's not gonna stop here. And if you go to Egypt, you realize that so many people, from journalists to women, I don't know what doing to you know this kind of controlling societies, authoritarian societies are everywhere yeah. and they enter every case of the society and not only in music, they're in the press, they're in everywhere in every every little pocket where where actually you can create change and that's what makes people, I mean the powerful people, that's what they are afraid of is the change or 
it's the fact that you can move things, you know, the architectures, and, and that's what they try to just stop. And I, want, I just told you, this is an information that I, I, not, I haven't researched a lot, but you know, in the Middle East, um, we didn't have any problem with, with homosexuals and with you know, lesbians, etc. It was part of a culture. It was, it was kind of, even you know, in, in Arabic literature, you have a lot of men, Abu loving Nawaz men. And, uh, even in Arabic music, okay? If you take like music from the 30s or the 20s, uh, all my heroes, because I'm really old school, I love Abdel Wahab and I love all those like really old school men with, <laughs> with, uh, with big glasses and really romantic. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> me and my grandmother used to love the same singer like we really, so much. Yeah. So these guys, when they sing, they don't sing to a woman, they sing to, they address a man. And so it's, it's somehow there was so, something that was in, in the culture and you have to maybe put into context that uh, we were colonized, we, we had the uh, empire, Ottoman Empire, right. then we were colonized by the British and the French and the British and the French and the, you know, the Europe created the new borders, the state borders and they created the, the rules, the laws that you have today and there are, in, yeah, that are, you know, Today, in today's right. world, it's a post-colonialist, you know, uh, uh, situation, and so the, the, it wasn't a crime to be homosexual nor lesbian. It's the British and the French that made it like illegal, yeah. you know, and so these in, are the, in the laws that yeah. were imposed on yeah. the by So, the so it's it's a mix of things, and 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 you know, people tend to forget that in I don't know, sixty years ago, uh, men or homosexuals were, I don't know, maybe more in, 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 in England, they were like, they could be killed or they right. could be imprisoned, jailed. Yeah. Yeah. And people tend to forget that, you know, women are still like, um, um, how do you say, um, uh, uh, abortion. abortion is still on the table, it's still a, a negotiation point. And so many, and so I say, so when, when a society is in a crisis and when it's a mess, always minority rights, I mean, even we're, if we're not a minority in, t in terms of numbers, we're still a minority, when our rights are always in, on, on the table as a negotiation uh, point. Cool. So, yeah. so that's, you know, I'm not surprised. And, you know, if you look at how many people are in jail, in CC's, uh, you know, Turkey. yeah, and look in Turkey and all those places, you know, you're just like, okay, uh, so it's it's just a totalitarian, authoritarian environment, so. This is why we need this young lady to sing out in Arabic all over the world. Let's go mm -hmm. to the Great American Music Hall. Yeah. Uh, I have my uh, 30 kids coming with me. <laughs> right, well, they're, they're over here, most of them. Uh, so we're gonna Where are go. Where the mothers? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. So basically, basically, uh, a lot of the people here will be here tomorrow. Will come tomorrow, and we're gonna encourage her there. But you won't get a chance there to talk to her one on one. It's gonna be crazy. It's uh, there's very few tickets left. So we're gonna give them a chance. What do you think? Yes, I look. He comes to me. Yeah, of course. Me. Uh, en français, uh, bel arabi, or in English. English. <laughs> so let's see. Who is gutsy? I know Rally was gutsy. Oh, Nathaniel Stewart. Hi. Oh, hello. Does. Keep up. Oh, a few software Arabia. Nachun kalama an beled. Wa Ramsi kalama an hela rania. Wa yetura. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, 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 in Nepal, uh, and Lubnan, uh, wa, uh, meda, uh, 
a mustakbal fi Lubnan. Ugh, if I knew. <laughs> so very quickly. I think uh, nobody, even God doesn't know. <laughs> very quickly, uh, Nathaniel is referring to her latest video clip called Balad. Balad means country. It was shot in Lebanon, in the crowded streets of Lebanon. And he was asking her, what do you think, of, you know, in terms of that video, what do you think about what's going on in Lebanon right now? I don't know how far you want to go into it, but Nathaniel. I can see that it's a big fast. mess, and it has always been like that. And um, I don't know. I don't want, I don't know if uh, you always have this place in your heart where you search for hope and you you are confident that that things will not go wrong, but everything else says the contrary. So mm -hmm. let's wait and see. But it's not it's not well. And you know, in Lebanon, you have a, a very mafioso establishment like. People who did the war, the 15 years of the civil war, are still in power. And you understand now, uh, with the distance, that they did all what they did. Because they wanted, what they have now is, they, they kind of like split everything between them. Like every single um, resource of the country. So this is how, and you cannot, it's not like you have one guy that you want to throw. It's like the whole, a whole like bunch of people that you cannot even fight, and that's that's yeah. The whole system is so corrupt and it's so manipulative, and they create. Actually, it's it's everywhere. It's a cliche, but they control you by creating problems and creating conflicts, and that's you know they divide people so that they can you know um, govern better. And so that's that's my real problem, and I think that the problem is also regional. We have a, it's a, you know, the, the Middle East is kind of fucked. But <laughs> sorry to say that it's it's true. No, no, it, 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 it works. But, um, <laughs> but the, my hope, like collectively, when when it's a collective thing, it's 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 a problem. But you have so many interesting individuals and so many interesting groups and so many interesting people fighting and being really activists and being and creating so much, you know, um, so much uh, work on the ground that I have hope that things will not collapse. But it's problematic. I mean, you cannot live next to Syria where the most dramatic thing is happening and you know feel happy or, or protected. You were not protected. We're like in a place where it can blow up any time. Uh, there's a regional strategic, there's something happening right now. We don't know about it, but like it comes from, you know, Lebanon has always been like a key country where so many foreign countries interfere because, mm -hmm. you know, they, this, they can control the whole region through it. So it's, um, let's, uh, let's wait and see, but uh, I don't know what to yeah. say more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, with the Kitlabia, they had been at Laura. Where are you? 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 Where are we sing with her. Look, Khalid already clearing his throat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have. I love the song of Feirouz. Which one? Because I have like, a, I had a, my small, really small sister. She was like four years old. I used to really have fun because I would, I would, she would sing after me. And it was so cute to see her sing like love songs. Oh, alright. Morning and evening. Ahmad, and the Tara Falunia, Tasa Adna. When I shoot. Okay, shall we do so? You need us. Sabah Homasa. Sabah Homasa. Shima bin Tessa. Shima bin Tessa. تركت الحب تركت الحب أخذت الأسى أخذت الأسى ما بديه no wait I have to remember the word ما بديه ما بديه لشو عمنا لشو عمنا على غيره على غيره في ناس كتير 
لكن بيصير ما في غيره صباح ومساء صباح ومساء شي ما بينتسى شي ما بينتسى تركت الحب تركت الحب واخدت الاسى واخدت الاسى ما شاء الله Hey, I did it. Hey. Laura, tomorrow. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow, no, so tomorrow and, yeah. when I say, Ya Aziza, it lie. La, ma, da, 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 she, so that's, that's the... Yeah. So we have, a, we have a kind of a, a, a really nice... Because uh, the one in the CD is kind of more popish. Yeah. And we have like a more like I go crazy right, on right, the right. one on stage. Is we saw more like the, uh, the dancing. No, no dance. Oh, like, no, dance. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so in English, in French, in Arabic, uh, how about. Yes, please. In English. Hey, in English. <laughs> Mr. Martinez. Hi. Now. Hi, how are you? How are you? Um, what, how, do you remember how you started in singing? And, and was it your family? Was it some other Started. Yeah, like you were little or you were older? Actually, I had a dream when I was a kid, but it was I was a very shy kid and uh, and very uh, introverted, and uh, and and I suddenly um, decided to, to change, and so uh, and and it's it's actually the music music helped me a lot to just fight all those fears that I had and. And, uh, and it was also the fact that I was uh, I came to Beirut after living abroad with my family. I came and I really felt like a stranger somehow because I felt that I was I need I sh it should have been my home, but I didn't belong how old you know I didn't belong hundred percent and I didn't have the codes and I didn't understand them and I started feeling like an insider outsider somehow and it it, it and it I needed a space where I could just go and and be inspired and so I I started in the beginning singing in English and I had a great accent by the way <laughs> it was like I really had, knew how to mimic because I learned a lot of like languages and stuff so I I went was into that and uh, and but it it really became serious for me when I felt it was that night I was a party girl and that night I was in this place called Bio 18. Uh, you know, it's it's a kind of Lebanon. like an iconic place in Lebanon, and and um, and I had danced all night, and I was kind of on, almost alone in this place with like a friend or two other people, and the DJ put this really old song of this singer, Syrian singer from the 30s called Asmahan oh. and it's Habibi <coughs> and it's my grandmother. I only heard my grandmother sing it. So it was the first time I really hear the thing. And the same time I see my friend who was a, an Armenian went into Hamra, into town, and I started searching for this music. And it was not easy to find. Because it was not at all fashionable, actually. It was not at all fashionable to sing in Arabic. It actually was like not good. It was mm. like, oh, this is not cool. Not cool. Mm. And I, I found a guy and I started finding, I call them my dealers because I used to really <laughs> go and you know, you have to talk to them and seduce them, not sexually, but like, kind of like you bring your pies and you're like, you bring a book and you start conversing with them and you wait for hours and then they start giving you tips and they started giving me a lot and I started collecting old Arabic music. And I went from Asmahan, whom I obsessed with for like a, a year and a half, to Abdul Wahab, this other guy. And Abdul Wahab was for me my guru because he was such a free artist. Um, before any label called World Music and any, any of that, because for me this is a kind of a, a bit of racist label. I'm, I'm okay with it now, but I've always felt like, what do you mean World Music? So who is world to you, and why am I world, and what is, I mean, it's an exclusive somehow term, but I do understand that uh, the industry needs to get organized around labels and stuff, but anyway, 
before all of that, uh, Abdel Wahab was, uh, was trying so many things and exploring so many textures together, rhythms, etc. He, uh, he was the first Egyptian, his father was a sheikh, and his father was totally against him singing, but he, he started singing, he went to Paris, he studied uh, <coughs> classical music too, and he was, uh, he was really, he was inter yeah, interested in Chinese music, Indian, Arabic. So that guy really was my guru. And, uh, and I had, uh, I, I started really realizing that, uh, that I wanted to sing in Arabic. And I had a four track, a four, a four track uh, recorder. And I started to, rec I, my first song actually was Ya Habibi Ta'ala on my first four track. That's my hands. Yeah. And I recorded it, and I used to record, you know, on my own. And I realized that I wanted to sing in Arabic, but I had no idea how to sing in Arabic because it was so much coded, and you had so many rules. And especially if you want to touch those songs that are so sacred, it was kind of like sacrilege, like you're doing something wrong. But I didn't care, and so I started. <laughs> So I started doing it, and uh, and it was uh, it was challenging, and uh, but I started learning how to, and I always thought that, for me, a singer touches me with one word, mm -hmm. because it has an emo, if it's carrying an emotion, and it's, if if it touches my heart, there's something truthful, and that's how I feel the music, and if she sings in Chinese or Arabic or English or whatever, I don't mm -hmm. care. So I didn't care very much about the technicalities, and that's how I started. I started wanting to take one element from the Arabic culture or the Arabic music that I liked, that I decided that I want this, and, I, and, 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 and tr bring it together with other elements that were uh, foreign to it, but in a natural way, because this is also who I was. I came from all those multiple places, and I, had, I have this mul multiple identity, uh, I, I belong to all those spaces and I cannot say that I'm like um, uh, purely one pure, one. pure race yeah. and I don't want to be one yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> she recorded one of those Abdel Wahab songs on Yanas, was it? Which, which, which uh, yeah, La Mush and La Lepki. La it's, oh, it's very different but it's still as heartbreaking, I have to say. Yeah. It's about, you know. No, uh, his, uh, the one he has a little bit, is a little bit kitschy, is going to you know, it's like, and so the one I did was, uh, is another uh, kind of attitude. Samina, Samina, but I was no, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but the, the great thing is, all Abdul Wahab's songs, they are sang and addressed to men. So every time I sing a song of Abdul Wahab, I'm just talking to a man. It works for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's so good. Okay. So it's always like. But it's not I wanted to tell you something about someone who helped me start my radio show. Professor Joe Bainan is here. He Hi. came on a Saturday with his lovely wife Miriam. Uh, he had a show called Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. All he played on. FM in California. Well, Asmahan Fayruz, Abdul Wahab, Kaza, Yehki Arabic Tiramni. Wow, I have, a, I have a big collection. Of <laughs> I, I, even vinyl, right? You have no, I, I, I hope I have, I'm, I'm really edgy. I yeah. have cassettes. <laughs> <laughs> and I have MP3s, and I have some vinyls, right. but, but I also, I, I love everything. I love Yemeni music. Um, Sudani music, etc. I'm not like a specialist, but I have like some bands that I really love. The Gulf music is amazing. Uh, last time I was in Kuwait, I went to this shop and I bought like 40 s CDs with like a lot of really like unique recordings. So yeah, I, it's my favorite thing ever. Mm -hmm. So you collect too? I, I have only CDs, but I have a whole lot. Okay. We, we never played either of us golf music. Uh, yeah, I mean, his, his was his golf Mediterranean. <laughs> oh my God. Was, was inspired. If you want, I can give you some. And also, some Iraqi chubi. Oh, it's really nice. Joel, uh, say hello to her in, in, in your beautiful Egyptian. <laughs> <laughs> How about you just welcome her to Stanford Bel Arabi? Shukran, marhaba. You know, I met this French guy 
who I, 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 there's a record that I listen to a lot, it's called um, Musique du Nil, I don't know if you know it. Music of the Nile. And, and it's from Said, it's this, uh, how do you win Said? Hey, it's an area of okay. Egypt by yeah. the Nile that's uh, kind, of, kind of rural. Yeah, very yeah. rural. And so this French guy, you know, he talks Saidi. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like he talks with a Saidi accent. It's so weird. Yeah, this is John. He can be Egyptian. You press a button. He can be Fusha. He can be a Marianne. He can be a uh, Shall we? Uh, so I wish we could. She could stay longer. But we'll do one more question, and then uh, into that, and then you have to be back at. I actually four have a rehearsal. I'm so sorry. At, at, at yeah. San Francisco, but we are going to go see her tomorrow. Be, be San Francisco. Uh, Jacqueline Hamamji. I have a question. Yellow. So I, 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 I'm like you, and, I mean, not like you, but I love uh, uh, Abdul Wahab. He's not only singer, he's a great musician. Yeah. Um, and he was the first guy who did like a comedy, musical comedy, uh, like he was, uh, you know, singing in a musical. Yeah. And I know you, know, you love Asma, but which other female uh, Middle Eastern? I, uh, I know who she wants her yeah. to get to. Not necessarily. No, not necessarily. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. of course, yeah. I, I love, I, of course, I love her. For me, <laughs> but um, I've always thought that she was too much of an authority, mm -hmm. and I love I love all her songs. I know them by heart, and but I love the previous one, like the very old ones, the Taati, oh, the the Taati of Am Kultum, the ones that re she recorded, like the three, four, five minute songs, not the two hour yeah. songs. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I love the two hour songs. I know I really know them by heart, all yeah. of them, but. But there's something about her personality that <coughs> I love her, but I um, I don't know. I've always felt that she was too much of an authority and too much of a power, like powerful. Like it's like I don't I don't know. There's well, my something. memory was as as a I'm older than you, but I, I remember like growing up. If you liked Asmahan, not necessarily you liked Am Kaltum, which was not. Oh, a there two, were two camps. There was a two like kind of. Oh. <laughs> And if you had one person that you liked very much, that but I, I think you know Asmahan's music also was so is so interesting because she has it's very edgy. She mixes so many instruments that are not eventually only Arabic, and she does a lot of vocalism. So she creates. She has the space where she explores differently, and Um Kutum is more like the real Arab. This is Arabic nation. This is the powerful Arabic nation, and that I love. But I'm like I was, uh, I was more sensitive to Asmaha because there's something more, maybe more melancholic, more fragile in her music, and in her songs, and maybe her story. You know, she died very young in the Nile, and thirty at thirty years old, thirty three. They think that she was a double agent. Assassinated. She was. She she was a like she was a very uh, subversive personality. But I also, you know, I also love Nur al Huda. I love uh, Zakiya Hamdan, mm. and uh, I love um, Sabah. I love Sabah Fakhri, but she's not a woman. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I love you know uh, Banna. Banna was oh, the yeah. singer from the thirties. It was not allowed or very still like that a little bit. It's not not allowed, but you know you have a lot of um, uh, stereotypes about women singing uh, in a way. And uh, back then it was really not really. Uh, and you had some really strong women singing like uh, Fathiya Ahmed and mm. all of that. And you had this guy who was a castra, and he always sang as a woman, and all his songs were like yeah, like uh, you know. And it was he was very very well known, so you have I have a lot of people I, I really enjoyed, and you know there's a friend of mine wrote this book called Oh Nui Oh Monsieur Yale Oh Yale Yeah, I don't know if it has been it, if it was translated into English, but it's really interesting because she talks about all this energy from that uh, 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 time. And she talks about all those women because you know the Arab the Egyptian cinema started with two women producer woman, they started wow. the whole thing. Uh, a lot of women were really organized to do things and uh, and it was very interesting to see and you have, she talks a lot about Asmahan and about her crazy character but she also talks about, about a lot about Um Kultum and Um Kultum was so, like she was God but she was also so much uh, controlling. She controlled the radio, she controlled who was aired, who was not, who she, so she was really into power and I I don't know how I just felt in her music that I love her. She's incredible, 
but I was more sensitive towards the others, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, she's a huge Fairuz fan. I have. To I love Fairuz. Jackie yeah. is. Uh, I love Fairuz. Fairuz uh, fanatic. Yeah. Fantastic, uh, Jackie. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Fairuz is uh, Fairuz is like um, I don't know. It's like. Uh, in the you morning. see, there's no words. <laughs> you know. Remember, Jenny, you said, "How do you describe it?" There is yeah. no words. It's just you know, what no, you live. No, no. When you <laughs> open, when you when you wake up and, right. and you open the window and there's so much some light that comes in, and some warm. That's very good. Yeah, the morning coffee and the morning. Yeah, the this is and she's a, so How tender. do you describe that feeling? Yeah. You know. It's like asking how old Fedros is. Yeah. How old know. are the stars? How old? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of question is that? You know? <laughs> and a lot of people. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so yes, we will be able to hang out just a little bit on our way out to 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 talk to people. I will have you back by four, inshallah. It's it's not going to be quick traffic going there. So I, I I don't know how to thank everybody. You guys thank are you my so family. Much. Every thank single person who came here. <laughs> Anytime you want, I always have shy and kahwa hidden in my office, but only for <laughs> anyone who came here today. <laughs> and we did it, kids. Thank you for helping Thank me. So we brought Yasmin Hamdan to Stanford. Shukran lakiya.